I've been working with crystals for well over 10 years. Overall, I am very happy with the options um, that Ugly Duckling has. Hey everyone, it's Talia here. Welcome back to another video on my channel. I am so excited for today's video. I am going to be sharing with you a variety of Ugly Duckling crystals. So they have their own brand, they're clear as mud crystals, and they are stunning. I know many of us have kind of been trying to figure out what we're gonna do now that we're so used to buying uh, Swarovski crystals. I've kind of just been waiting to like play it out and see what kind of other options are gonna come out. And we do have another option with Ugly Duckling, which is great. If you've used Ugly Duckling nail products then you know that whatever Ugly Duckling puts out is amazing quality, very well made. You can tell that they've put the time and effort into making sure that the product is the best that it can be. So we're gonna go through basically all of the options that they offer. So I'm hoping that this video will help you kind of figure out what sizes might work best, what colors might work best to bring in. Um, I'm also gonna go over how to apply them and give you some of my tips and tricks for that. The product that I use the majority of the time to apply crystals is the Ugly Duckling Sticket. So we're gonna go over some tips and tricks for working with that. And also some tools and such from Ugly Duckling that work really well for it too. And I wanna say a huge thank you to Ugly Duckling for sponsoring this video. It has been a dream to work with Ugly Duckling. I'm so very excited to bring you some um, more Ugly Duckling content on the channel. So Ugly Duckling has 17 different color options for their crystals and then within those 17 different colors there's a variety of different sizes for the flat back colored crystals I really like the size options that they picked for these crystals so they have an SS3 an SS5 8 10 12 and 16 so typically when I'm working with crystals I like to do about a 7 a 9 a 12 and a 20 um, and so there's really great options for that within uh, the, the sizes that they offer. So this is an SS3. It is super, super teeny. Um, and then an SS5 is this size. Uh, so I personally tend to reach for about an SS5 more than the threes, but threes are really great fillers, uh, especially if you're doing crystal clusters or you're doing full nails, anything like that. Threes are a great option. We'll dive a little bit more into the sizes. First, I wanted to go through all of the different colors uh, that they offer and give you guys my feedback on them. I feel like they picked some really, really great color options here um, that I personally would use quite often. I'm very happy with their color selection. So your two staples that you're likely going to get the most use out of would be these two. This is their crystal and then this is their AB. So AB stands for Aurora Borealis and it is kind of like that rainbow look with crystals. The nice thing about uh, like the AB crystals is they literally pair with any color. Um, you sit them next to a pink, they're gonna look a little bit more pink. You sit them next to a blue, they're gonna look a little bit more blue. And then um, the crystal ones are, they go with everything as well. So these are two great staples to have in your collection in basically all of the different sizes, I would say. I go through those probably the most. This is one of my favorite golds. So uh, they call theirs Colorado Topaz. And um, the reason that I like this shade of gold is because it's not too yellow. It's a little bit more of like your like darker champagne type of shade. So if you're doing any sort of gold looks, this would be one that I would gravitate towards to pair with it. Now you guys know that I love to create nail sets that um, have a variety of different color with them, but also incorporate crystals with them. And I love having a variety of different crystals to pair with the different colors for the nail designs that I'm doing. So um, this would be a staple for me because if I'm doing a gold look or something a little bit more neutral, this is what I would gravitate towards using. So this is their white opal, another fantastic option because anytime that I do opal-y type of looks, so if I was gonna put crystals on my nails, I would probably grab something like this or if I'm gonna do a white nail look, uh, I would grab something like this as well. White opal is fantastic for snowflake nails, great for wedding nails. Um, it's, it's one that I personally would never run out of because it is just such a great addition. They do have a black one, so this is their Jet. If you've watched any of my crystal videos before, I have said that it's kind of difficult to have a black crystal that is still sparkly, um, and you'll see it with this one. It's kind, like it is, it's definitely sparkly, which is great, but it's not like your see-through crystal. It's got almost like a more matte look to it, um, but I am happy to see that this has a little bit of a sheen to it too, because um, previous crystals that I've used, the variety of black ones that I had, they kind of just more like looked like a black dot on the nail and I don't think this is what um, that one's gonna look like. 
Another good variety here for their pinks. This one here is absolutely stunning. So this is their rose opal and it's got an iridescent gold look to it. It would seriously pair so nice with the nails that I have going on here too. Um, I don't have like a rose opal like this in my collection. I think I might have used one or two from a crystal mix. Um, but these I think are going to end up being staples for me. They are stunning. And if you're doing a pink set with some really pretty golds, I would definitely gravitate towards this one that is a beautiful pink i like that we have two different options of pink crystals here too this is their fuchsia and this is their light rose when i'm doing nails that incorporate pink crystals with them i like to have a variety of different shades of pink and i like that they have this light pink and then a brighter pink too um, this is a great one too this is champagne um, so this kind of reminds me of a rosy peach type of shade. Uh, and I like that this is lighter than the Colorado Topaz one. It does have a little bit of like an orangey look to it. A good option. Siam, um, fantastic red. This is just such a stunning red one, especially for Christmas time, Valentine's Day, anything like that beautiful red option and they have one purple option so this is their tanzanite and it's a little bit more of a darker purple um, I would like to see a light purple too because again I tend to mix like my lighter and my darker shades depending on the nail looks that I'm doing um, so I would like to see a light one too but this is their tanzanite option and I'm happy with these blue options too um, this one here is their montana and so it is their darker blue. It's kind of like a denim blue. This is their blue opal. So a great option for light blue nails. Fantastic for um, winter nails. This is their cape blue. So it is a brighter blue option. This is their um, aquamarine. And it is another blue option. So it's blue opal, aquamarine, their cape blue, and their montana. Lots of great blue options here. And for green, we really have just one. So this is their emerald, a nice darker green option. And then they do have um, this one that they call peacock blue. And this is a great kind of turquoise looking crystal. I've been working with crystals for well over 10 years. I know which crystals I tend to reach for to pair with different designs. And overall, I am very happy with the options um, that Ugly Duckling has for their crystal shades all of the different color options that they have. I would like to see that light purple. Let's talk about the different sizes here of crystals. So all of the different colors that I just shared with you come in these different sizes. So we have our 16, we have our 12, we have our 10, we have our eight, we have our five, and we have our three. Great options here, a very nice selection. I personally do use bigger crystals than a 16. I um, tend to use 20s. Not a lot of people do that. I don't think a 20 would be a super popular size option. If I was to recommend crystal sizes that I would tend to reach for to do crystal clusters a lot of the time, um, it would be a 5, a 10, and a 16 with the options that Ugly Duckling has. Um, I'm happy with their size selection too. You can tell they've been working with crystals for a long time as well. Um, so let's go over some of the different shapes as well. Using pointed back crystals is when I fell in love with Ugly Duckling Stickit because anything else that I tried with pointed back did not hold the crystals as well as the Ugly Duckling Stickit. For pointed back, they have five different color options, champagne, clear, AB, rose opal, and white opal, and they are available in these different shapes. Uh, so this is their eight millimeter round, this is their six millimeter round, which you can get in any of those colors I just listed. And this is a great size. I really like that one. Uh, you can also get their square, which is available in six mm. Look how pretty that is. That is just so stunning. Or you can get their four mm, which this is an amazing size. This would be fantastic for crystal clusters. Um, they have their teardrop shapes. This is their four by six. And then this is their four by eight size. So the four by six, again, a great option for a variety of different nails. They do have a rectangle shape too, which I love this. Absolutely love this crystal shape. I think that's so pretty. And then they do have the Marque one too. Which, um, flat back shapes, a variety of different flat back shapes. These are only available in clear though. So this is their teardrop flat back. This is their six millimeter round. I love this one too. And like, look at how sparkly that is. Marquee one, they're oval. And this is a six by eight size. So this is a little bit on the larger size. Crystal teardrop. 
are their 3mm squares. These are fantastic, a fantastic size for um, a variety of different people. Ooh, so they have two different options for their squares. These ones have more um, facets with it. So that's fun, different options for those. Three rectangle sizes as well. We have two by three, which is their smallest one. So oh, teeny, that is, that is a super cute option. Um, this is a two by four rectangle. And then this one here is a 2.5 by five mm rectangles as well um and then next up we have two tools so this is their blinger tool it is a double-ended tool on one side you have your um crystal picker upper side which this is the wax tip over here and then you have a very small dotting tool on the other side to move everything around and the nice thing about this handle that i really really like is just how long it is i find this length um easy to flip around when you're applying crystals because a lot of times you'll put your crystal on you'll flip this around and move it and i find with a bigger handle it's easier to do that and it's nice and heavy too and the detailer number two rush is a fan favorite people love this brush and for good reason it is a super super fine fine brush hairs on the end you can use the detail number two brush for so many different things uh, but it works fantastic for applying um, top gloss in between your crystal clusters because the ugly duckling stick it um, does not cure tack free so you will have a dispersion layer on it so you either need to remove that dispersion layer or just go in with a top coat on top of it as well um, and then their no, no wipe top coat is a great option for crystals too. Um, a couple other things I do want to go through that was in the package as well are these. So these are their metal caviar beads. They come in three different color options. You can get their rose gold, you can get their gold, which is a nice kind of yellowy gold color, and then you can get their silver as well. Different sizes of beads in here. You've got your really teeny ones over here your bigger sizes over here, and then your larger sizes on this side over here too. So these are great if you're doing crystal clusters and you wanna kind of surround your crystal clusters, fill in any gaps. I didn't really start using caviar beads until um, I started working with Ivory for the press-ons, and she uses these all the time and she got me hooked on them. So um, these are a great option, and I like that they have like your three most um, popular metal options for it too. Last but not least, is their ugly duckling crystal display but you could use the crystal display for um content creating showcasing different products uh, on your social media, using it for your website, using it for tutorials, or in our case, we um, use these for our press-ons because they are just such amazing quality. Uh, so I had one originally, then I had one sent to me years ago, and then I ended up buying six more, seven more, because I use these all the time with the press-ons. Um, then probably the best thing about these stands is that the magnets in the actual stand here are so sturdy. Like your stands are not going anywhere. You can put your metal stand on your little crystal display here and actually file the nails and um, it's not coming off. That's how strong that metal is. And then this is beautiful. It is genuine crystal. So when you're using it in your videos, um, it's just going to sparkle and they have um, silver stands and then they also have gold stands too. So if you're using these for, let's say creating press-ons or creating nails for yourself to wear um, or anything like that, you're doing more than just one demo nail, I would recommend picking up two of these stands um, because the stand holds five. So you would want, if you're creating an entire set, you would want at least two of them. But if you ever see stands in any of my videos, it is 100% these stands. Um, I actually, when we first started the press-on shop, ordered um, some some, like lesser quality ones and some inexpensive ones so I could have a variety for creating the sets that I, we do and I use them maybe once and I said nope I am ordering more of my ugly duckling stands because I did not want to struggle with um, magnets that didn't work very well I like the quality looking better in my videos nice ugly duckling stick it um, we live in Canada ugly duckling is a Canadian brand sometimes during transport things can happen and your ugly duckling stick it could freeze and what's gonna happen if that happens is this so it's gonna go a little bit thicker and it's gonna look a little bit cloudy here do not panic it is an easy fix and I'm gonna show you guys how um, personally for me I don't mind if it goes like this it turned like this and I ended up warming it up and it goes back to clear so that's what we're gonna do with it but Let's say you didn't want to do that, you don't have time to do that, anything like that, you can definitely work with this still. So what I find 
with the ugly duckling sticker, which is really interesting, is when you put it on the nail, it almost like melts. Like it's kind of interesting. It's such an interesting consistency. So right now it's all thick, but you can see it start to like melt on the nail. And so a thicker consistency like this, the nice thing about it is your crystals aren't gonna move anywhere with it. But if you prefer a more liquid consistency. So their recommendations is it says, if your shticket gets cold in transit, um, and make it very thick and crystallized, which is exactly what happened here. I was actually really pumped when I opened this and this is what it looks like. Um, just place your pot in a mug of pre-boiled water and let it sit for five to 10 minutes and it will return back to normal with no bad side effects. So that's an option. You can also use a mug warmer and just sit it on here. You don't wanna put like your plastic container right on top of your mug warmer. You do want some sort of barrier here. And the reason that you want that is so that this doesn't heat up. You don't want to melt your plastic or anything. Um, but just let this sit on here. So do the rest of your nails, let this sit. We're gonna, that's exactly what we're gonna do. And I'm gonna come back and this will completely um, go back to a liquid format. Um, but I know that can be kind of alarming when you open it and you're like, uh, what, is it supposed to look like this? It's not but it's easily fixable. <laughs> so it has been sitting here for probably about five minutes now, and you can see that all that crystallization is gone. And it's um, to a nice consistency to work with. And then you should not have problems with it going back to that crystallized state either. Now that it's melted like this, it should be good to go. For the demo, I am just going to, I'm gonna do two demos. I'm going to do one, to give you some tips and tricks on applying and then show you the different sizes of uh, crystals that they offer. And then I'm going to cover an entire nail in crystals too. So uh, the color that I'm gonna use for my background is Ugly Duckling uh, number 29 potted gel. It's this nice neutral color. Kind of has like a taupe look to it. And I do have videos of swatching all of these potted gels too. Uh, so definitely check that out if you're interested to see. So you guys have probably seen in other crystal videos that I've done years ago, um, I would use a glue, like a resin for doing crystals. So I liked that method if I was doing, um, like working on top of a finished file nail. So the more that I work with gel polish or uh, gel pots that go on top of like our press-ons or on top of a finished file nail, the more I tend to reach for something like Ugly Duckling Sticket. Works so well. I know if I'm using Ugly Duckling Sticket, it uh, will hold the crystals works amazing for pointed back and I don't have to worry about the crystals coming off. I do them right down the nail and this is usually how, this is how I would apply ugly duckling sticket either with a dotting tool like this or a small brush, anything like that. And I'm just gonna put my gel down where I want it. All right, so there's our progression of crystals. Our 16, we have our 12, we have our 10, we have our eight, we have our five, and then we have our three. I'll give you guys my tips for covering an entire nail with crystals. Okay, so I like to use a base that'll kind of match the crystals that I'm working with. Number 52, it is stunning. It is just such a beautiful, pink sparkle. This is just gonna be a base for it in case there's any gaps or anything so that you've got something down as the base. Uh, this glitter gel applies beautiful in one coat. I do like to do a second thin coat, but it does work really well just in one coat. Okay, I am actually gonna get just a little bit of a bigger brush. I like to start with my big crystals first. Surrounded too pointed back ones love these rectangle ones these ones too and i like to form like i like to put the pointed back together like that and then i'm gonna grab some of these smaller ones and kind of surround it underneath I'm going to take some of the rose opal stones as well as the light rose stones and I'm just going to keep the majority of my bigger crystals right in the center here because I figure that that's kind of where they're least going to get bumped if you were to do this on a customer as well. And then I'm going to gradually kind of fade out to the free edge of the nails with some of the smaller crystals. 
I also decided to do this in a few different steps. So after I had my big crystals in the middle, I did cure it and then I came back in and did the rest of the crystals. I did this in about three or four different stages. Now, if you were working on somebody with shorter nail beds, you would obviously not have to do as many crystals or spend as much time uh, curing in between. I used to do my full nail crystals with just the pointed back, like rounder stones. And I would do all the large ones in the center and then gradually fade out to the smaller ones. But now that there's so many more options for the pointed back to create little clusters in the middle, I really like that look for it as well. Now I don't go in with any of the beads, the caviar beads for this nail design, mainly because I have that nice pink background to kind of poke through, but that would definitely be an option that you could do as well. And it would make it look a little bit more like jewelry on the nails, which you guys know I love that as well. So after I have the crystals all down where I want them, I'm going to take some of the Ugly Duckling tack free top coat and the thing that i like about the packaging of the ugly duckling tack free top coat is that it's square so it almost acts as like a little palette on top for you to drop a drop of the gel on top of it and then you can just work from that when you're surrounding your crystal clusters which is exactly what i'm doing here i'm going to take the detailer number two brush and i'm just going to surround wherever there is a gel poking through or in between the little crystals here as well do your very best not to get gel on top of the crystals because it can dull them now long nails covered in crystals look fantastic, but if you have clients that like to wear shorter nails, it can be kind of tricky to come up with different crystal designs. So I'm gonna show you guys my five go-to crystal designs for short nails. So I'm just gonna paint some uh, shorter nails here with the Ugly Duckling color 169. It's a great kind of neon pink. Probably my favorite crystal look is just a crystal cluster in the corner of the nail. I like to do this on ring fingers or pinkies or thumb when I'm trying to close in a nail design. So I'm going to put some of the Ugly Duckling stick it down and then I'm going to take an SS16 crystal which is a great size for short nails. I am also going to go in with the 12 next on both sides and then we're gradually going to go to a smaller one which is the SS5 here. I did decide to take some of the caviar beads and put them in between the crystals. Uh, this is something that I Ivory does all the time and I really really like how it looks um, it can be a little bit time-consuming to get them in there but it does make the crystals look really nice and like a completed crystal cluster after I've cured the ugly duckling stick it I'm gonna go in with a tack free top coat again just surrounding those crystals not going over top of the top coat so that we are not gonna dull them at all and you may need to take a little bit of a smaller brush to surround your crystals closer to the cuticle as well For this crystal design, I wanted to use some of the pointed backs, which you can absolutely use on shorter nails too. I'm going to take one of the smaller squares and then I'm also going to take the rectangle. And when I'm using pointed back like this, I like to try and use two pointed backs so that I can uh, join them together. So you're gonna have less kind of pokey edges for your clients to catch their crystals on. And then I'm gonna take an SS16 and I'm going to kind of create this little cluster right close to the cuticle. And I just decided to surround it with a couple of the smaller ones too. You didn't really have to do this step though. It would have looked great with just having the larger pointed backs in the center there too. After I've cured the Ugly Duckling Sticket, I am going to take a little bit of the top coat with my brush and just make sure I'm surrounding the crystals in the back as well. And then I'm going to top gloss the rest of the nail and this design is done. So you can definitely do a small little cluster with some of the pointed back on short nails as well. Probably my ultimate go-to for crystal designs though is to put a crystal cluster around the cuticle. I really like how this looks. The largest crystal that I'm using here is the SX16. And then I'm going in with some tens on the outside as well as some fives to kind of surround it. And then my smallest ones that I'm using are the threes that you can see on the outside. Now for this design, just pick crystals that you think work the best, but start with your biggest one in the center and then just kind of gradually fade out to your smaller ones. And same when you go down towards the cuticle. You don't have to do the last one at the end. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. This one is super simple and just adds a little bit of a statement and you can use as big or as small of crystals as you would like for it. Generally, I like to work with a larger crystal closer to the cuticle. I just personally love the way that it looks, but if that's too big for your clients or for you, uh, definitely go a little bit smaller. So I'm gonna take the SS16, and then I'm gonna go in with my 12 and then I'm gradually gonna fade into my eight. Now you could keep going with this all the way down if you wanted, or you can just kind of stop here like I did. And I really like this for just a little little accent especially if your clients maybe you haven't had bling before or don't like too much of it this is definitely one of my go-to's 
this crystal design I don't do as much as I would like and every time that I do do it I just love how it looks but I like to take my largest stone and put it in the center and then again gradually fade to different sizes so I'm just gonna use the AB ones here look at how much they sparkle these are so sparkly I just cannot get over it um, I'm taking an SS 16 then I'm gonna go into an SS 10 and then down to an 8 and if I had room which I do on this one I'm gonna put a little tiny one at the free edge as well uh, so this is when it's great to have a variety of different sizes is so that you can mix up the designs if you're just doing simple crystal looks. Hopefully that gave you guys some ideas of how I like to use crystals in my nail designs. I'll just do one or two nails kind of with these different ideas and sometimes I mix them up. Sometimes my nails will have one sort of crystal design, sometimes they'll have another. Either way though, there's so much you can do with crystals. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this video. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that it helped you. I know it can be kind of overwhelming when you're trying to decide what kind of crystals to bring in, um, how to apply them, especially because of the price point of crystals. You want to make sure that you're going to have them last on your clients or on your nails that you're creating for yourself as well um, so I'm hoping this video helped you guys definitely comment below and let me know what your favorite um, crystals were that I showed you what you think you would get the most use out of um, what do you tend to reach for a lot in your nail studios I would love to hear it make sure you're following me on all my social media and I will see you guys in the next video bye